So the thing with this is, this is not everything. Not even really close. Uh, we still need uh, mounts and whatnot, but those are being made. So I thought I, we're, gonna, we're gonna try to get as much done as we can kind of here. Uh, this is kind of just a layout of what we need right now. And I'll run through most of it. Um, it there's some of these things are not necessary. Most of them I would, I would do just cause. And this is not an MTDI. This is an ETDI, which means the pump will be smaller. It won't be sticking up and you won't have to really mess with that too much. So I honestly, I think the ETDI swap is quite a bit easier in my opinion, as long as you get somebody to do the harness. And then it's just stupid easy. So speaking of harnesses, the uh, harness is at the very bottom. If we're looking at this real quick, we have a MAF cable, uh, N75, which is an electronic blow-off valve. Um, we have, this right here is an inject your injectors. Uh, and then we have um, crank, that must be for crank position. And then IAT, or in the injector pump, I guess is probably what you'd call it. This is just the main connection. All this stuff is stupid easy. Seriously, it takes about two minutes to hook it up to the engine. The harder part will be hooking it up to the van, but I'm still not worried about that much. Um, this is your OBDU port. He even has a cool little 3D printed TDC thing on there. His company has TDC. Um, and that has a light, nice long cable so you can you know put it in the front of the van. And then over here we have um, I think this is the, yeah, this is the speedometer cable, uh, and I'll talk about that in a second. You have your relays, which is all you need to run the engine. That's really it. And then this is where your ECU plugs in. Got an ECU over there. Um, and then you have your battery cables, just simple pluses, and then here's your, your yep, there's your body uh, ground. It's got a nice big relay in there. A bunch of relays and then he's got a big fuse is what I actually meant right here. Not a fuse here. And a little fuse here. But um, and then the rest, these are data. These are going to be, I believe, analog. But here's cruise control. This is one weird thing that I'm doing. And we're going to kind of have to see how that works as we go. I asked him to install this uh, or keep this on. I, you'll have to ask because he usually takes that out, I believe. Um, but you'll have to find a 12-volt key on for this lead right here. And then the rest will hook up to a normal, I think, Jetta you know, toggle or whatever. So I'm gonna have to figure out how that will mount. I think I've seen somebody do it. So I guess we'll have to see kind of how it is. But then the rest of these are uh, like temperature. You have your, I think, TAC right there, which the TAC means requires, you'll get information with this once you get the harness, but the TAC requires um, a, uh, I think, an, a booster to run with the original, I think maybe, or something like that, but I'll figure that out. Trigger, probably 12 volt. Um, this is, yeah, glow plug light, which I don't have a diesel Vonnegut dash, so we'll probably have to see what we're gonna wear that into. Well, maybe just an indicator. Temp gauge, and then oil pressure light. That will just go to the normal oil pressure light. And uh, I think that's it for this, and that's literally how simple that is. So I'll link him, he is awesome. I think this is about $300, maybe just like a tiny bit more, but seriously, ridiculously cheap for how good it is. I highly suggest having this guy uh, do that. So speaking of that, we're talking about the, uh, the crew, or the, uh, my bad, not the cruise, the, uh, the, the pedal. And the weird thing about this is it's not actually uh, wire driven. I mean, it's a electronically driven, but it does, it's not cable, even though there is a cable. It's kind of a weird system. So there's this cable right here that you'll hook up to your pedal, and then you'll literally hook it up to this, and they just connect together. But this is how you can do cruise control without having like an extra module or anything. And also, it is really nice because you can still use the cable from your van. We'll have to see where we're gonna install that, but I feel, I, uh, a few people have told me, I believe, about that and said you could do it, so we'll be looking at that. I think this is a bracket. Ooh, I can't remember what this is for. I'll have to look back at that, but it's just a bracket right now. We have our ECU, uh, Malone tube tuning. These are, I think, chips. I think the current one's already installed, so these are probably just older ones. I will clutch pressure plate all together. This is an L-U-K or Luck or Luke or however you pronounce it. All this stuff will be linked, and yeah, it is L-U-K. I can see that from here. It comes with literally everything. It comes with even the bolts that you need. Which, so this is your upgraded oil cooler. This is absolutely not necessary, but I, honest God, just do it, seriously. Like, I have heard, like out of the few issues I hear, sometimes people say they have high oil temps, and sometimes I hear that they have um, high, I can't remember what it is, but it's your exhaust temperature, which is important to diesel. Um, and I'm gonna be doing a charge cooler, which is not in here, but we'll 
do a layout for when we actually end up getting that. I'll probably have to figure out the routing and whatnot for that, but, um, but and then oil. So we, we're getting the bigger oil uh, cooler. So we're just gonna, we're gonna do that. That should be all good. We have exhaust and intake. Um, I can't remember where that other one is. That actually probably isn't here right now, but I do have them. But uh, they are the gaskets for those. They'll be linked. And then there's copper nuts for the exhaust so they don't seize. Uh, we have the oil baffle. I think this is what that's called. Uh, that is, uh, I think some engines come with them. Just buy a new one. They often have dead seals and chase seals, so just get a new one. They're like $30. You have a Vonnegut diesel oil pump over there, which is absolutely 100% necessary unless you want to modify the other oil pump to fit. Um, so why not just buy a new one? That's one thing that could, that could go out. Uh, which we did, they're brand new, available brand new. Loctite 242, that is, I believe, blue, actually, is that what that is, even though it looks red. Um, you need that, it's medium strength, you're going to want to put that on everything, basically. You don't want anything backing out, you put this engine in, you want it to, you know, work. Okay, now to the kind of, kind of pretty, actually, we have literally aerospace grade tubing, all custom done, really expensive. Honest to God, really, really expensive. 100% worth it, I would say. But here is his info right here. He's GB, G-E-E-B-E-E -E 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 Aero Products. He literally <laughs> supplied gloves, and he supplied this incredibly nice tool. It looks like literally like a snap-on, like unbranded tool, and it is uh, a bendable uh, kind of like socket, and it's meant for these tubes, and it is awesome. Seriously, I, have, I don't know why I've never thought of this. I would have bought these, this anyways. Uh, but these are all custom tubes. They are so, so nice. They are literally, he does aircraft, uh, aircraft tubes. And this is just what he, this is his other kind of side business, I believe. But these are, I believe, for the front of the van, uh, for the, the radiator, which I'm, we're going to be getting a new radiator probably too, and a new gas tank. But uh, here you have just like the main hoses you kind of need. Um, another thing is replacing this, the, the metal tubes that go to the front from the back. Highly suggest that. We have not gotten those yet, but definitely I'm going to. Um, looking over here, we have our oil pan. This is literally brand new, hard to find. I'm not gonna lie. One of the more annoying things, but I happened to find a dude that literally had one brand new in a box. This has never been used. And then over here, we have our exhaust and intake manifolds. These are very specific. I believe this one is hard to find, this exact model of, because you'll need the triangle instead of the trapezoid uh, flange. And also, you need the specific one because you need the specific one of these so it points in the right direction. But they are findable. They are kind of annoying, but you can find them. Honestly, I will probably start trying to source these for other people, um, but we'll kind of have to see. And then, honestly, buy an impact gun. This is not mine. We're going to be buying a nicer one anyways, like a bigger one. But this is just for now. You want an impact gun. It will make you, it will make your life so, so much better. So today we are focusing on mostly the set of the engine. We're going to be taking off the uh, exhaust and intake manifold and putting on the new ones. Uh, we realized the studs came out with this one, so we're going to actually do this at a later date. But we did the oil pan on the bottom also. The only thing we're going to do on the other side is the oil cooler. Other than that, that actually ended up not working because of uh, a different... So in the next bit, uh, we are going to show us taking off the oil cooler, and then we're probably going to do the oil pan right after... Um, so this is not really that difficult. Honestly, it's pretty easy to follow along. Um, this is, we do run into a few issues which we are gonna fix. It's basically just us missing one part. So we just have a standard oil and oil filter right here. So what you're looking at right there is going to be your standard oil cooler. That is gonna be replaced with a, a uh, the bigger oil cooler. So right here you're looking at a ko 3 co 4 hybrid turbo. Um, this is not necessarily what's going to come on your engine stock. This engine has a little bit of a rally history to it, so it's a little bit bigger. Um, the uh, oil line on the bottom is definitely going to have to be replaced because of the position of the turbo is going to change quite a bit. Uh, these manifolds are going to be all changed out. We're going to be taking this turbo off. Uh, later inspection, we saw that one of the turbines was actually bent. I had a little bent blade on it, so we'll actually maybe be upgrading to a VNT, I think 1722 or something like that. Um, not sure yet, but I think I'm going to run this at least for now, and we'll see how that is. But uh, it's going to be reclocked, which basically means the turbo uh, can kind of move its positions to where its housings are. So here we have a M8 by 75 and a M6 by 25. 
So the, uh, the washer you're seeing right there is actually a spring washer or a wavy washer. I don't know why a lot of hardware stores called them wavy washers, but I guess you can kind of see. Um, you'll need two of the, the M875s and 20 of the M625s. The 25s are a little bit longer than the standard bolt for the oil pan, and you will need them to clear the uh, baffle we put on. Okay, so this is not going to be that exciting. I am... You could probably clock your engine sideways if you want. Honestly, it, it really doesn't matter. I'd probably keep it this way because there'll probably be a little bit of residual oil in it. You're going to want to drop this. There's 20 bolts around it. Take every single bolt out. Oh wow, those are weird bolts. They have a star in them and a hex on the outside. We just did normal hex. It really doesn't matter. Whatever, uh, whatever works, works because they will still function. You don't have to get super high spec bolts also for these because these are not like a load bearing things and there's 20 of them. So we just did like grade eight or grade, whatever, a lower grade, yeah, yeah, and then grade 10. We were gonna do grade 10 for the oil pump bolts but it wasn't really the big of an issue we can find them so we kind of avoided that. It's all good, I wouldn't worry about it. So we're gonna take these off, we'll skip that and the, these do need to be torqued down to a specific spec so we'll talk about that in a minute. Okay, you're good. Okay, so I can bring it down. Yeah. So there is our oil pan. Today we are going to be taking off this oil pump right here. Wow, I did. I, they said hexes would work, but these are not hexes. These are Allen, but that is totally fine. We'll be putting hexes in there. It literally does not matter, um, as long as they're the right spec bolts. It actually probably would have made this a lot easier if we could have used Allens. That's I kind of assumed that there would be an Allen in here, but I guess literally everything else is hex. Nothing really to be worried about. So I'm kind of taking off this old oil pan gasket. Um, we'll clean up the, uh, the seal around here. I'm not exactly sure what most people do for the seal, but uh, we'll make sure that gets cleaned up. Okay, this is a T40. This is a star bit. It's literally gonna work. Don't even worry about it. Honestly, <laughs> we're not using them anyways, especially, so it does not matter. So take those out. You can just use an actual wrench for torquing or raking stuff. Yeah, not that bad, but still. I'm shouting out William Poole, super great. Seriously, like I literally would not be able to be doing this without William Poole's blog. And make sure you're cleaning up everything as you go. Don't wanna be getting any contaminants in these. It'd be a very bad place for that. There is a uh, drive shaft kind of, and there is a key. You're gonna wanna make sure it goes into that. If you see, there's a little line on one side. And I'm sure inside of it has a little bit of that line also. But uh, it looks like it kind of goes like that-ish. And that maybe. There we go, sick. That is not bad at all. Uh, I don't feel any sh play, so that should be perfect. Okay, so we got those crush washers and the longer bolts. They okay, just go in there. Nothing too crazy. And 20 newton meters for these two bolts right here, and then all the oil pan I believe is seven, so. You're a click. So we can uh, get the baffle on. Shit, I just realized I learned from my mistakes. Do as I say, not as I do. Except for Moss, he's like the one dude that doesn't drink. Yeah. <laughs> so he's basically free. Exactly. So you're gonna wanna put that on there because I don't think it will slip over very easily. I probably could have just checked, but um, you're gonna wanna put that on first. So, thread locker works. It's a magical thing. Basically, when it doesn't get to see any oxygen, I believe, or at least air, it uh, hardens. So, that's how it's magical. There's a lot of, you'll get a container of it and you'll see that it's like all air and you'll be like, what the hell? What did I, did I get scammed? Oh, put a little bit of thread locker and just a bit of it. That was a ton. Should be fine. Next thing, these are all seven pounds. We are, the weird thing about this is it is kind of difficult apparently to get the transmission on if this oil pan is on here. I think it's because of the weirdness of the different oil pans, but they work, it's a whole thing. But, so what we're going to do is we'll put these on, but we only hand tighten the bolts just to keep it on, and that is it. So I won't hand tighten them, I'll, I'll use that, but. Okay, this, absolutely not needed, trash. Okay, this is integrated in here. I asked, I didn't see that in William Poole's blog, so this is, I'm glad that I'm clarifying that right now. 
Otherwise, I'd be stacking gaskets, and that would probably, I mean, it looks just like the other gasket. Probably be bad. So, real quick, actually, I'm gonna go wash this off because it's got a little bit of like dust and whatnot in it. We do not want that in the engine. That would be very bad. Ooh. The turbo is probably gonna come off, so we'll take this off. Uh, this line probably needs to come off, it looks like. It's just a few bolts. These are 13s, and then these are Allen's. I'm not sure what size they are. We'll see. Probably T40 or something would work, star bit. And then uh, we'll put our newer manifolds on them. So they are 12s. Okay, cool. So the stud came with it. Looks like I'm probably going to be replacing these studs. That's okay. Right? And it looks like that last one is probably going to need it. Okay, that wasn't bad. Then we got this one off. I think it was a 22 or something. I just used an adjustable wrench. And then we're taking off this other flare nut over here on this line. And then we'll take off this manifold. 